Welcome back to Omni Garage. So here I've got CarPro D-Scale. Now CarPro have introduced um, a, a new product range for 2022 and one of the products was this here, D-Scale. Now currently in our process we're using Obsess Garage um, decontamination soap. Now we would only be using that if we were going to go through and do a full detail. That soap it pulls um, things like waxes and, and bead maker and things like that off the surface. It also helps with um, getting the surface ready for mechanical and chemical decontamination. So you'd only want to use that soap if you were going to go through the whole detailing stage. What I'm really interested to find is a product that is just as good as that and something that we can hit source locally here in New Zealand and add that to our process. Now this is our second ever decontamination soap that we've ever tried so we're not sure about whether we're on the right line or not or whether this is the product for us. The added benefit of this is that CarPro sort of claim that it's used for reconditioning I suppose your ceramic coating. So this car is topped, um, has got CSL topped with EXO and so we're going to see if we can rejuvenate the coating. It's been on here for nearly two years and um, what I'm starting to see is a lot of soap scum build up in and around sort of panels like that that sort of just reach the sun spot that comes over the top here. There's a few water spots here and there and there's a few contaminated baked on sort of road grime and stuff. So CarPro say that in some cases it can pull off water spots that are on your coating. It can help re remove some of that deep road grime that you necessarily wouldn't get with your normal cleaning stages. So we're going to see if this product will actually do that for us. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think the interesting thing on this as well is it's not a product you want to use regularly. So don't go and use this for your weekly wash. Go to a different product for this. It is relatively pH balanced. It's got a pH of 6, um, but it's really used to rejuvenate. You're going to use this ahead of a full detail. You're right, your mechanical, your chemical decontamination or you're going to use it irregularly to revive your ceramic coated car and if CarPro, what they claim about the water spotting is, uh, is spot on then you use this if you do get water spots in your ceramic coated car as well but definitely not your weekly wash. I don't think we're going to see on camera whether or not we've pulled out water spots it's something that I'm going to have to see in the right sunlight and in the right conditions over a period of time we'll check back with you on that and um, so let's basically get stuck in. Alright so a key to a good soap is how well does it work in the foam cannon does it foam really well can we actually get it onto the surface we then want to see is it nice and slick because when we're decontaminating the car we don't want to be introducing any more scratches and then how well does it work in the bucket does it work well with the with the foam or with the mitt and does the foam last well so we've got did I say 150 mils of soap in here with 600 mils of water so let's try it out turn the purginator on my chief oh yep we got the purginator down here need to get the upgrade soon Hang on, we've got to get some water through this bad boy. Oh. Do you turn the water off of the wall? Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's just breathed. <laughs> Ooh. So straight away I've noticed it foams really well and it seems to be clinging really nicely to the paint so which is helpful because you don't want soap just to spray on and then run all the way down and it's got a nice subtle cherry scent which I mean seems to be the flavour of soaps at the moment they all seem to be wanting to make them into a cherry scent so let's get in and wash it and let's see how well it performs in the bucket. What's the slickness like? It's pretty slick. I can see that you are probably going to end up with that scum sitting on there if you don't quite get every area which is something that we have struggled with a few different that soaps. That is a good, that's good slickness. Yeah? Yeah. So it doesn't feel grabby, you know when you first wipe with some soaps the surface is really quite grabby. This is definitely up there in slickness actually. Which is quite good because you compare it to their uh, CarPro Reset, although I haven't tried it in a while that soap is quite, well not as slick as this. So yep, that's a good test. That foam's still sticking really nicely. You can see it along the, uh, the roof rail. Even on the glass over here, it's sticking quite nicely. This is the first area of the car that was sprayed as well. We've got pretty decent suds in the bucket. I mean, this is just the first wee while. So do the suds actually last throughout the whole wash? Yep, 
Yeah, so can you see there on the door how where you've wiped, it's left that line where you do have that scum sitting on there. So I think this is potentially a soap where if you don't end up wiping all of that off, it's that similar behavior to um, hyper wash, I think. The way it looks on the paint though, that's very, very easy to remove. If you let that bake in the sun, yep. game over. Yeah, so very similar to the properties of hyper wash in that respect, that's a Meguiar's product. I tell you, the smell is really pleasant on this though. That, that cherry smell is right up there with, um, I know you've mentioned a lot of detail companies are leaning toward cherry as their, uh, their flavor is. of the month at the moment, but it is a really nice smell. So these door panels were pretty dirty. They had a bit of dirt on them. And so as we come down to here, you can feel that it's still pretty slick on the paint. It's always a really tough one to tell on cars as well, the claim of the removing of contaminants from the paint through a soap, because it's, it, unless you really get scientific with it, it's a really tough one to actually get a gauge on just by washing the car. And it comes down to it, right? Does this take my bead maker off? Well, if it does, well that's good, because when you are coming into your decontamination phase, you want it to strip anything that's on the surface. So if it takes the bead maker off, I'll know when we come to dry it, then that's good. Does it work well in the bucket? Yeah, it's working pretty well. Does it foam pretty well? Yeah, okay. And you're right, I don't think we're going to be able to see whether it takes water spots, that's going to be a different thing. Yeah, we'll need a different vehicle for that, and I do have, uh, do have one in mind that we could use that does have some water spots on a uh, freshly, coated, uh, freshly coated surface. So today's not going to be the experiment for that. No, this is just to see if we can um, tidy up the surface and see if we can give it a bit of a refresh, I suppose. So this product is one that will work best if you let it dwell for a period of time on the paint. So you don't want it to dry on there, but let it dwell because that's what's going to help break up the road grime, the contaminants, and any sort of coating or sort of bead maker or anything like that on the surface. If you're working in direct sunlight, you don't want this to dry on the paint. But um, dwelling is definitely something you want. Yeah, look, to be completely honest, I think you're wasting your time with this product. If you're out in the sun trying to get a quick wash in before you do get water spots and you're having to work really, really quickly, I think you're wasting your time using this product. Save this for a time where it's a little bit cooler out, you're not working in direct sunlight or you've got some shade because you do, to get the maximum benefit out of this product, you need to have that dwell time on the surface. So. And that makes sense because for this product to work, the dwelling will help loosen that dirt grime. It'll give it time to sort of release it from the surface and that will help break down any sort of topper you have like bead maker or wax or anything like that. That'll help remove, remove, remove the bonding from the surface so that you can then wipe it off with your mitt. So we just finished up rinsing down the, the soap that was left on the, on the paint here. And straight away I can feel that this paint is very grabby. So whatever the soap has done, it's pulled the bead maker off the surface at a minimum. I think it's done a pretty good job of cleaning up the surface, so I'd be pretty happy now, would you, to take this car now and move into our chemical and mechanical decontamination phase. Yeah, if we were detailing this car, the next thing that we'd be doing is getting ready to spray two more CarPro products, Inex and Tarex on here. You can just see the way that the water's behaving on there. If you still had your layer of bee maker on, that water would not be sitting the way it is. Certainly it would be sitting a little push, bit. I, if I push these, they do sort of turn into a thing and, and do run down here, but the water is sitting on the paint, so I think it's done a good job. It's definitely removed that top layer of, of something that was on there, which was, in this case, bead maker. It was really slick as well. It definitely wasn't grabby, which is something that I have found using the Obsessed Garage decontamination soap in the past. I've found it has been less slick than other soaps we're using. First, I think comparing this one here, I'd say this is equally as slick as GSF or any of the other soaps that we enjoy using. And a good soap needs to be slick because that's important because you don't want to be introducing any more scratches, especially if you were using this as a periodic maintenance product that you're using every sort of couple of months or so just to refresh the coating. You want it to be slick because you don't want to be adding any more scratches. It worked fantastic in the bucket and after washing, that bucket over there still got suds in it worked really well with the mitt and it foamed and clung, clung to the surface of the paint really well. So, so far it's ticked the boxes. I think this is the second phase of this product. It's gonna be really hard to determine whether or not this coating has been refreshed. I think that's a really hard thing to determine. Whether it's taken water spots off, we're not really gonna be able to show that on camera. You're gonna to have to sort of take our word for it and I'm not gonna be able to assess that right now. That's gonna take some time. And has it really sort of taken any sort of baked on contaminants that necessarily we didn't remove in our normal wash phase? I'm unsure. So the second half of what this product sort of claims to do, I can't really give the answer to that right now. 
No, we do have another vehicle that we are going to try that on in the coming, uh, probably can't promise coming weeks, but coming months. So we will revisit this product again and we'll try and use it in the, uh, yes, in the application of trying to remove water spots from a freshly coated car. I think that'll be really interesting to see because if it does that, I mean, already this product being easily accessible here in New Zealand, it's gone right to the top of the list of products that we were going to use. If this could pull water spots out, I mean, it'll be fantastic. I'll be buying a gallon. And, and so far, we're both pretty happy with how this has performed in these early stages. So I just want to reiterate again that this is something that you would use periodically or if you were going to go ahead and get in and start and polish and start to correct the paint surface. This is something that... Um, you don't want to be using as your weekly or fortnightly soap. This is something that you want to use quite sparingly. You want to be a bit careful with it because of the, the ability of it to strip things off the surface. So we are going to continue to work through the uh, 2022 CarPro new product range. And um, there's definitely a couple that we've already done, but there's a few that we're still eager to get our hands on and, and try out. So if you're interested in those videos, subscribe to the channel so you know when they're being released. And um, thanks for watching. Give us a big thumbs up if you liked it.